much for joining us today. I'm Jenny Dempsey, and I'm here with Jeremy Watkin, and this is our webinar, Learning to Fly, How Twitter Took Our Blog to New Heights. So welcome. We're really glad, really glad that you're here today. This is our first webinar, and we're really excited. So uh, I just want to just say, you know, bear with us. Like I said, it is our first webinar. So, <laughs> and um, we are, you know, it's going to be pretty casual, so there will be some, some laughing and, and stuff along the way. <laughs> but um, feel free, like as the webinar, you know, goes on, uh, you'll see on your GoToMeeting there is a section to enter questions. So feel free to enter questions at any time during the, the webinar, and uh, we'll have a Q&A towards the end of the, of the session today. So um, we'll answer all of your questions. So please do feel free, um, or save them till later. You can always contact us through email, and um, we can correspond that way. So, all right. Oh yeah. So we introduce ourselves so you can get to know us. Um, Jenny is customer service supervisor here at Phone.com. Uh, I'm the director of customer service, and I've worked here for a little over 12 years now. And uh, Jenny has worked here for almost eight years. Almost eight years. Um, this is our but, professional picture. By the yeah. Way. <laughs> Halloween costume, Carmen San Diego, and a hot dog. Um, but yeah, what we do, what we've done, our whole, I think, right out of college for both of us is customer service. We started out. <laughs> doing frontline support and, and just uh, worked our way up here at, uh, at this company, and it's, it's been a great opportunity. Uh, we thought it fitting to share our favorite beverages. Mine is an egg nug latte from Starbucks. I love those caramel brulee lattes. I always switch it up, but that is definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, I wanted to talk uh, real quickly about how we got started writing this blog, and we've, uh, we've been writing it for about four months now, but I really got my inspiration um, Welcome in to go to meeting. Online meetings made easy. And um, feel free to meet yourself. Call us on the call. <laughs> so, um, so the, our blog really got started. I was um, on a trip to actually Oregon to work with our frontline tier one support. And sitting in the airport and I watched, I was just uh, waiting in line to order something and um, I watched this lady order coffee and the order taker took her order and then she waited, you know, several people in line. Um, she got to the checkout counter and the lady was like, we don't have coffee here. Our coffee machine's not even set up. Um, so clearly a failure in customer service, and I, I realized that um, we have a lot of experience in customer service, um, a lot of knowledge as far as good and bad customer service, and I think um, I saw it as a good opportunity to start writing about it, identifying it, um, using it as a, a tool to help our team understand what good customer service is. Um, so, so that's kind of where it got started, and I said, hey, Jenny, how about writing a blog with me? And so that's what we've been doing for the last four months. Yeah, and it just went from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Jeremy kind of touched on our purpose here, you know, really to help our team identify, you know, and, and see those customer service opportunities. You can make a customer's day that much better. Um, but also, you know, we want it to be fun and, you know, sometimes, or most of the time, the best way to learn is through having fun. And networking is also a huge part of this. Um, you'll see as we go on in the webinar how important networking is in customer service for people that have been in it way longer than us and know a lot and we learn from them. And we want to share, you know, what we learn and just communicate better all together. So, so that's so we have some, some distinct goals for what we're doing um, with, with this blog and with Twitter and whatnot. Um, the first and foremost, what it was founded on was to observe good and bad customer service. 
Um, and the more, the deeper we get into this, the more I realize that customer service is all around us. I mean, you can you can tie customer service to the way you talk to your kids or talk to your parents or your your spouse or or whatever or your boss. Um, I mean, you can go on and on about internal customer service within companies, between departments and whatnot. It's everywhere. Um, we have no shortage of ideas for posts to write about it. So it's good to observe it and learn how to make it better. So, yeah, secondly, we learn from our observations, um, learn what good customer service is and do it, um, learn what bad is and avoid it. Um, so it's just a great a great way to learn and talk about it, and I think we learn so much by talking through that kind of stuff. Um, I, one term I've really loved learning about is thought leadership. Um, when you have all of this experience of customer service, and I know we have people on here with more experience than us, um, it's good to share it. And I truly think that, that if you look at customer service that happens all around, um, by making customer service better, even just in your realm of influence, you're making the world a better place. Um, our, our next goal really is to make customer, we work for phone.com, so we are using this as a tool to um, create an awesome customer experience uh, at phone.com. And then finally, um, we want to improve and inspire awesomeness in our customer service team. We're kind of playing with the word awesome as being like our our tag word for customer service. Yeah, because there's some other words out there that um, amazing or magic moments. Um, so we just, uh, we, we're we trying to find what fits for us, and awesome seems to really be our, our word. <laughs> and um, for achieving our goals, you know, we blog every day. Like Jeremy said, there is not a shortage of of things to write about in customer service, whether we are out in the world experiencing it firsthand, good and bad customer service from going to a business, um, things that we experience internally with our customer service team, with our customers, things that we learn from when dealing with our customers. There's something to blog about every day. And it's you know important for us to blog about it every day to get you know out there in the customer service world on Twitter, um, sharing our blogs. Um, you know, it brings attention to it and people are more likely to read it if it's consistent. Uh, we really encourage guest blogging. So any of you listening, you know, if you're interested in writing a post for us, <laughs> interested in writing the a post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guest blogging. Yeah, so we definitely want you to, to write for us. Um, because we learn from that too, you know, we get all sorts of different perspectives and that's what's awesome. We had a post recently about coming from one of our, our programmers here at phone.com. And I mean, it's so interesting to hear it from someone who's not really in customer service but still has to deal with the customers. So lots of different perspectives. We encourage our employees to read the blog, to share it with others, and we all talk about it and learn from it. And it's, it's exciting um, for us to read and learn internally. We like to share uh, what we're learning in what's called a Communicate Better report. Um, Jeremy's created this. And we basically take all of the good feedback that we've had from our representatives throughout the week, and we put it together into a, kind of a like a report. And there, the start of the report begins with a the recent blog post. So we're encouraging our team to read these blog posts, learn from them, and then read about this awesome feedback. So it really continues the motivation throughout the entire customer service department. Um, sharing the blog with our customers. We don't, we do that often. We have it in our email signatures. Uh, so our customers are seeing this. Our customers are responding. A customer even quoted me on something I said in one of my blog posts. Um, so I mean, this comes back to you. And it's nice to know that you're making an impact, even with our customers. And they know that we're learning. And we're trying to do the best that we can in customer service. Um, our daily communication is where the supervisor team meets every single morning, Monday through Friday, and we talk about, for about 30 minutes, what we're going to do that day, and we talk about moments of magic that we've had with customers, either from the day before or from that morning. It's really cool to hear how everyone is impacting you know, other customers and, and the rest of the team. Moments of magic don't have to just come from customers. So we're definitely working to achieving our goals. 
consistently, and um, it's an everyday, everyday thing. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of kind of what our philosophy is with our blog. Um, we wanted to talk about Twitter specifically um, because we feel that's been a great vehicle to um, to get the word out about our our blog and our posts and what we're learning. Um, so I want to talk to you. Just this is this might be basic for some, but um, to just go through what what our strategy is on Twitter um, and how we're using it to promote our blog and also just increase our learning about customer service. First of all, get a Twitter account. Um, Jenny and I both have our own personal Twitter accounts, but we also have our joint Twitter account, um, Com Better Blog, that we, we use to tweet all about customer service. Um, secondly, uh, I think you, what you want to do is build a, an audience on Twitter. Uh, identify, one of, the, one of the ways you can do that is to identify um, I guess top influencers in your field. If it's customer service, um, you can find people that are tweeting about customer service and follow them. Um, and a lot of the really social ones will follow you back. And if people, you know, if you put something in your your profile on Twitter that you're um, you're about customer service, people will find you and follow you. Um, when they just jump down in a report, uh, but. But set up set up streams on Twitter to um, read what the the influencers and customer service are talking about, and uh, if they post blog articles, read their blogs and comment on their blogs. Um, we just found some great opportunities to learn there. Um, also, I mean, it goes without saying, anytime you make a blog post, tweet it, um, send it out there, and and that increases the likelihood that your posts will get read. Um, one thing I've read that, that has stuck with me is that by retweeting people consistently, um, it shows that you're listening to them, that you're reading their content. And I think that's a good way to interact with people on Twitter. Uh, and as I said before, follow back. Uh, and then another thing I've just observed from a lot of people is, uh, is have good manners on Twitter. Um, Say thank you to people for reading your blog and sharing your posts. You can see when people mention you. Um, I always say that Jenny is way more social than I am and better at interacting with those people, but <clears throat> I'm trying to learn to be more fun and carefree with with those responses. But you're really good with the consistency of the tweets and keeping them going and, uh, and the blog posts. So if yeah, that consistency is out, yeah. good too. Um, and then, yeah, just be social and be yourself. Um, I think one thing that's helped us is to realize that we have a lot of experience in this field, so we're qualified to talk about it. At least we've deemed ourselves qualified. So uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's another slide. Um, one thing that I've found particularly useful is to uh, the more people you follow, uh, the more noisy Twitter gets. Uh, you'll just have a sea of information. It's hard to get to the relevant stuff sometimes. Um, but what I've done is set up, uh, use Hootsuite. I've heard of other programs like Buffer and whatnot, but I think the really useful thing about those programs um, is that you can you can create lists. So like I have a customer service list of key people that I really want to follow and make sure I don't miss their their tweets. Um, so I follow people that way, and it, I, you know, I have a smaller circle of people that I like to read and uh, make sure I don't miss. You can also set up um, searches, and I mentioned here hashtags. With with Hootsuite, you can set up um, searches based on hashtags and set up a stream. So, like one of the big customer service ones, ones is uh, hashtag customer. And uh, I have a stream that just, that, or a feed that just shows me that search all the time. Um, so you can just watch how people are talking about customer service. It's a good way to find new people to follow that might be tweeting about it. It's also uh, just a good way to interact uh, about customer service. And um, yeah, I guess I said broadcast your original blog articles. Contribute your original content to Twitter. and. Um, and hopefully, 
as the more you do it, the more people interact with you, the more people retweet you. They'll actually go to your blog, maybe set up an RSS feed and actually start reading your blog regularly. Um, so that's kind of that. And I would be happy to, if anybody wanted to see a demo of Hootsuite, I'm happy to show you how to set it up. But I know there are other programs out there that just help you manage that noise. So we chose Twitter because it's, well, it's free. And it's a great way to network with, with people. And there's a lot of businesses that use Twitter. Um, the way that the customer service world is moving is, you know, you can tweet to any, well, to a lot of companies and you can get responses from them to fix issues that you have. It's a really quick and easy way for the companies to respond and for everyone to see. So it's making an impact. Like you had a problem, you tweeted to them, the business sees it and everybody else sees it as well. And so it's basically free promotion. If you solve that, you're resolving the issue and everyone's seeing that that's happening. So Twitter is just a, a really great way to get free promotion for your business, showing that you're doing an, an awesome job. And if you're, you know, even if you, when you have issues, the fact that you're making them better over Twitter and showing everybody that you're doing that is, you know, it makes an impact. Um, you know, connecting with, our, um, for example. Example, you know, we huge um, interest. Jeremy corresponds with him often. He's gotten a couple books from him, signed by him. Um, you know, and it wouldn't have happened if we weren't have been on Twitter. Um, we've um, been in industry newsletters, customer service related news, online networking events. Um, there's some companies out there in uh, like in, in New York, and I've been at a couple networking events, which has been really exciting. Never would have heard about them if it wasn't for Twitter. Um, recently, it was on the Huffington Post. We never would have had that opportunity if it was not for Twitter. And it was just simply, you know, we were talking customer service and, and we promoted it on Twitter. Um, so the connection leads to so many opportunities on Twitter. Um, it's, it's pretty much endless. Um, it's really exciting because you never know who is going to be following you, who you're going to be following, and what you're going to find out about and what it will lead to. Learning. You know, the internet is so awesome. You could learn anything you want at any time. And with Twitter, when you can, you know, create those lists as Jeremy was talking, and you can follow the people in your industry, and you're able to really pick up on different articles about things, different viewpoints, the learning is endless. You can continuously learn and apply what you learn, you know, to your position, to your company, and everyone else can learn with you. Um, the growing, you know, you. When you're learning, you're growing, and you're seeing improvements. We see improvement in our team. Just from the four months of doing this, we've seen significant improvement in ourselves. I know I feel a lot more passionate about going to work by knowing that I'm doing more than just you know answering a phone. Um, I'm, you know, we're making an impact here by communicating better with our customers. And with our team, you know, with, with us feeling more passionate and having these posts out there, our team knows that we care and we care about our customers. And this, you know, falls right over into the team. And the motivation is becoming so high for everyone in our customer service department. And that leaks over into, you know, our engineering department. And that leaks over into the company as a whole. And it's, it's you know, creating a big culture shift. We're kind of a startup company here at phone.com, so it's really exciting to see how much influence this is having on our entire company. So connecting, learning, and growing is huge um, with Twitter. Um, and it also, you know, going back, just jumping right over to the social media aspect of the business, um, you know, we connect with customers on there, and that's really exciting as well. So it, it really bridges the gap, and customers can also learn with us, which is exciting too. Cool. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about ways we've improved. I, uh, and some of you might be more uh, quantitative people, and I don't have a lot of like numbers to flash at you right now. But um, I, I firmly believe that the direction we're heading will have a lot of. Um, uh, more quantitative data to 
back up, I think, what we're improving qualitatively. Um, I think the quality we're seeing just in morale and, and whatnot is really good, but I do need to do some stuff um, to back that up with numbers. I know my boss would like to see that. <laughs> um, but just to talk about a few things we've improved on, and it's a little redundant, but um, I definitely learning from experts. Jenny mentioned Jeff Hyken, and there are others that we could name for you that that are just so experienced. Uh, oftentimes, I think it's like free consulting because there's so many people out there sharing resources. Um, there's just so much we can learn. Um, and I think one of the fun things about this has been seeing the guest bloggers come in from mostly from from within. Like we have Danielle, one of our supervisors, who um, I just pick on her because I think it's so exciting to see that she, for example, she'll go to Disneyland and observe customer service and bring it back and write a post. So obviously, she's she's going through the process of observing. And um, we had a guy named Jared from our Tier One support team write a post. So he's he's in the mode of observing. So there's just so much learning and observing to be done. Um, another thing that we're doing, um, especially customer appreciation, I think we've really realized how important that is. Um, maybe just the simple gesture of uh, writing a thank you note. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the company Zappos, but uh, their their whole philosophy is, legend, is wowing customers. That's what it is, their word is wow. <laughs> Um, but they talked about, uh, in one one thing that we read, they talked about making a personal emotional connection uh, with customers. And one way that they do that is by regularly sending uh, things like thank you notes. They even send flowers and stuff to customers. Or you can read online. They, they have 10-hour phone calls with customers. Um, <laughs> but, sure, but little sure. things like that, we've started small, but um, just if you talk with a customer and make a connection with them, learn that they're having a hard day or maybe recovering from surgery or an illness, um, send them a thank you note, and it goes such a long, such a long way. It's just that um, I think it really cements that relationship with the customer. Um, so, so that's one thing that we've learned that I think uh, I haven't put a, a value on it yet, but I, I think we'll be able to down the road. Uh, another thing is just proactive customer service. Of, um, realize just how reactive we are in customer service. Um, we wait for issues to arise. We wait for people to call when they have problems. Um, how many people cancel their account with phone.com because they can't figure out our control panel? And the thing that really scares me is that that they would cancel because they couldn't figure out and they wouldn't call us to see if we could help help teach them and sort it out. Um, so uh, we're learning more and more the need to be proactive, um, to to call out and, and see if people need help with their service, with their setup, whatever, um, and to follow up with them. And Jenny and I have um, personally just made it our goal to call one customer a day. Um, I don't know if I've, I've done it every day, but, but I've um, it's been great to connect with customers and just make a note to follow up with them and uh, make sure they know they're appreciated as well. I never, I never connect with them without telling them thank you for being our customer. Um, so back to appreciation. Um, uh, choosing the right attitude. This is from, there's a little book called Fish that I read a long time ago and um, the concepts are so simple but it's so important to choose the right attitude when you get to work. And I think um, I'm. I think we're constantly looking for ways to make the workplace fun, so that we can make this lead into our frontline staff. So I know they get beat up on the phones, but we want them to choose a great attitude and not let the customers choose their attitude for them. Um, so that just shows up on our blog all the time, and something. And, and that also means that we have to choose a good attitude. So when we interact with them, um, we don't help dictate their attitude. Um, and then, uh, let's see, just being social, I think, improves morale. Um, we're kind of spread out across the country. I think it's sometimes easier when you're all in, in the same office, but, but being social with people, um, 
finding out how they're doing outside of work and stuff like that, I think really helps employee morale. And I think that's part of what we're learning about and doing. Um, another big thing is just listening to our customers, listening to their feedback, uh, being diligent and responding to their feedback, both good and bad, um, certainly celebrating the good feedback. And then uh, I'll say book club, but um, I'll let Jenny talk about that one because it's on two slides. <laughs> <laughs> well, the book club is awesome. We kind of got the idea, our engineering department here at Fund.com does a, a book club, and uh, we kind of adopted it for our customer service team, and we've, we've read um, Disney's book, I don't remember the actual title of them. Fear, Fear Okay, there we go, Fear Guest, thank you, um, about guestology, we've read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, we're reading Raving Fans right now. Um, you know, and what we do is we meet together and we'll, after reading, you know, an amount of chapters, kind of like being in school again, you know, but we're reading these chapters and then we're all talking about it and having that communication, you know, between each other and learning, you know, about what we've read in this book is awesome. Like, it's such a cool way to interact with our team. And then, you know, we'll write blog posts about it and then we'll tweet about it. So, and we'll, you know, we'll tweet with the, the hashtags with the you know, book names. Um, we'll tweet to the authors if they're on Twitter. So it's kind of a cool way to connect, you know, on all these different levels. So that's really exciting. Um, for Feedback Week, uh, we decided to kind of create different weeks. And Feedback Week was our first, like, themed week for our blog. And so we focused the entire week on what to do with bad feedback, with good feedback, uh -huh. Um, you know, with uh, other ways to handle customer feedback. We read articles online and wrote about them. Um, we did a Google Hangout. Uh, Google Hangout, by the way, is another awesome free tool that you can use um, for your company. You can record the the, um, the sessions that you have, and you could put them on Twitter and, you know, get a lot of um, feedback from <laughs> other people that are watching them as well. It's a really cool thing to do if you're not all in the same area. Um, I still think it's funny that we did our Google Plus Hangout and like hours later the Huffington Post contacted us, contacted Jenny. So they obviously saw me on the Hangout as well and they picked Jenny up for me. Oh, are you sad about that? A little bit. <laughs> Look, you hear me, you'll be on the next one. <laughs> but, but it was really cool. I mean, they did, then they, they featured our blog on, on the show. If you haven't seen the show, um, there's a, a link on our blog, communicatebetterblog.com, and you can watch that. Uh, but it was definitely exciting to see that, you know, wow, we made an impact. They saw our hangout. They contacted us, and they wanted us to talk customer service on their show. Um, so, uh, you know, huge impact and, and free publicity for phone.com and for our blog. Um, and we've also started our, our weekly um, coffee and customer service Google Hangouts. This is also inspired kind of by um, chefs, hiking, uh, and other customer service experts also will do the Hangouts. And we kind of titled it Coffee and Customer Service. And we'll just grab a cup of coffee and talk about, you know, the, what we learned this particular week. And um, I'm usually on the East Coast, so it's kind of cool to also for me to be able to connect with my boss, you know, each week and um, and make fun of each other on the Google Hangout. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it has other purposes, but it's fun. You see, going back to the fun, but it's also a really good learning experience and a great way to collaborate about customer service. So I just wanted to, we're just about to wrap it up and. So if you have questions, get ready. Um, but just wanted to talk briefly about what's in it for us. Um, first of all, we, we're we hungry for Twitter followers. So connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and we will definitely follow you back. Uh, secondly, read our blog. Comment if you have anything to add. I'm, I'm not a proponent in saying stuff just to say stuff. <laughs> uh, I'll comment if I feel like I have something to add to the conversation. But uh, you can comment even if it's uh, we already said. Uh, we welcome all comments. And then thirdly, um, check out phone.com. Uh, that's obviously the company we work for. Uh, we love the service that we provide. Uh, I think 
virtual phone service is awesome. Um, if you're interested or have a need for it in your company, um, we can offer you three months free today. So contact Jenny or me after and we can set you up with that. And uh, the fourth thing I wrote, just to reiterate what Jenny said, is, which isn't on here, but if you ever want to guest blog post for us, we would love it. Um, or even um, do a Google Plus Hangout with us. That would be, that would be amazing. Um, but no pressure there at all. But uh, you can just email, we didn't put it on there, but email stories at communicate, communicatebetterblog.com. And we would, we would love to connect with you that way. Yes. So coming up next for us as we move forward in our Twitter journey, um, we are really looking to jump in you know, headfirst to um, phone.com support on Twitter, social media support. Um, so this is a really good way for us to get our feet wet with, with Twitter. So um, if you're with phone.com, you know, be on the lookout. Support over social media. We'll be here very soon. Um, improving our Facebook presence for Communicate Better blog. Um, we are, you know, we're kind of, we focus more on Twitter because we get a lot more uh, activity on there, but Facebook is also there. Uh, we have our Twitter feed on our Facebook page, but um, we're going to work more on uh, enhancing our, our Community Better Facebook presence just because it's all, Facebook is also you know, so big out there. Um, we have a Twyla page, and uh, it kind of takes all of our tweets and puts it into a cool, like, it looks almost like a newsletter website type format. So we haven't, um, we've, we've worked with it a little bit, but um, we want to maybe you know, take more advantage of that because it, it's, um, it's a cool feature as well. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming up, and uh, we'll continue to connect, learn, and grow. <laughs> So do we have any questions um, or any type of feedback about about anything? I don't uh, not see anything on the chat. It's, uh, I hear some crickets. But um, you know, if you're shy, it's okay. You can you can definitely contact us uh, for any you know questions, feedback, comments, um, ways we can improve our webinars in the future, um, things you want to see on our webinars. Um, you know, if you don't use um, Twitter for your company now, and you you have more specific, um, you know, uh, inquiries. We can definitely help you out with that. If you have questions about phone.com, um, so please do. You can either tweet at us at com better blog. You know, there's two M's in there, <laughs> um, or just send us a message stories at communicatebetterblog.com. That goes to both Jeremy and I, so we can both reply to you. Um, but yeah, the floor is open. I do. I, this is Catherine. I do have a question. Just um, one. Just thank you. I think this is really um, a lot of good food for thought, and you know, makes me think how we can do something. Um, first call resolution too. Um, so, do you ever find like how do you just manage like all the incoming tweets and like I mean, with you know, busy people, emails, and tweets and everything, like how do you stay on top of it? I'm just kind of curious. So I, um, I think Jenny and I might have two schools of thought. I, the program Hootsuite is awesome and it's totally free. Um, I know we have Angela on the call who I think uses Buffer and she might have something to add there. But, um, but yeah, I think Hootsuite is great because then you can like, like follow all, you can set up a list of call center people and just follow them. Or um, mm -hmm. I know for first call resolution, maybe you'd want a list of just your clients. Like I have a list of everybody that works for or invests in phone.com, and I I follow them. Right. Okay. So Hootsuite is really great for that. It's I can I can if you want to see it real quick on the screen, I can put it up there. Uh, yeah. Let me, uh, I guess I can pause it. Here, let me show you. It's, it's kind of overwhelming when you first look at it, but. And it takes a little bit of time to kind of organize it, but it's definitely worth it. 
it's going a little slow. <coughs> Angela, do you have any comments about Buffer? Have you used? You don't have to jump on, but. OK, so now it loaded. But you can see, like I have my home feed, which is all of the noise right there. And then um, you can see our sent tweets. We can see where people have mentioned us and reply to them there. I, I think we, we always try and reply uh, anytime someone mentions us, to, if nothing else, say thank you. Sometimes we'll interact. Um, where people have retweeted us, that's not particularly useful. I still have to log into Twitter for that. Um, but then I have my list. So I have a list for top customer service people that I follow, um, phone.com people that I follow, uh, specifically the customer service search. Um, but I know like there's a CCTR, which I think is a contact center one, um, and uh, inspiring people. Some people just post quotes. They don't really post articles. And um, those can always be really inspiring. So that's kind of what I do. And you can also manage your personal Twitter or Facebook. And you can do like up to five strings, five streams um, on the free version of Hootsuite. So that's nice. Uh, and then the other thing is you'll see it periodically people will publish like newspapers and they compile a bunch of articles um, and I subscribe to those and those are really useful for getting good relevant customer service content. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, no, that's great to see. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, if you need any more help setting that up or anything, let me know. Okay. Any other questions we can answer? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can there's always email us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to point out there's some stuff in the GoToMeeting chat. Oh. Oh, right. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so Alex asked, Hi guys, thank you for the info. How do you feel about Pinterest and how it works with Twitter? Well, Pinterest is interesting because you get to, you know, you take images from anywhere on the web and you basically pin them to a, a bulletin board and you can create different, um, you know, uh, categories for each bulletin board and um, like for your business, like um, you can have customer service images as one board. Um, we can have, you know, uh, I don't know, inspiring quotes for another one. So Pinterest, you know, depending on what your business is, I think, you know, it could benefit. I think there are there's a lot of users on, on Pinterest and they could repin the images. We don't use it now. Um, we might, one of our, our supervisors, uh, Danielle, uses it often and gets a lot of really awesome, like, cool <laughs> ideas from it. Um, so it's definitely an influential um, you know, platform, um, it definitely is, and especially at Alex, you know, I know you're at um, the campground, so I mean, that would be awesome for you to post different pictures of, you know, the campground, and for also your users to, to you know, be able to jump in and post pictures of their experiences, so it really ties together the company and brings, you know, everyone together. Um, to create really cool online experience and everyone can, can see that. So, um, you know, like I said, we don't use it yet, but it is definitely an influential platform for sure. Cool. And then um, Angela, thank you so much for writing in the chat. So the, uh, so she basically, if, you, if you're not reading it, the Buffer, uh, the Buffer program, it links up with Twiria, which tells her the peak times of uh, when followers are on Twitter, um, so you can, uh, so your tweeters, uh, your, your tweets can have the uh, the greatest impact. And I've noticed that on Hootsuite, there's actually an option with the paid version to, well, you can schedule your tweets, but um, then Hootsuite has an auto schedule thing, which might do some of that, but I'm not totally certain. Um, but yeah, that definitely may be something to check out as well. 
Yeah, there's so much cool. out there. So thank you for the questions and, yeah, and the totally. feedback on this. Cool. Anything else? Anything else you guys got? If you learn nothing else about us, <laughs> we are the we are the uh, royal family of um, awkward sound <laughs> <laughs> and just general awkwardness. So, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for much attending. for joining us. Um, email us or whatever if you have any other questions. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll yeah. do. Have, have a great, great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.